Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. Known as a drop and unknown as an ocean, this place suits exactly for the crypto world. There are a lot of concepts for crypto and every day new innovations are coming up with newer concepts as well. So here I have collected few of the major concepts in a brief for you all to get an overview of the crypto. And if you want to learn more about all these concepts, just subscribe to my channel and I'll be posting a detailed information on all these topics every bi-weekly. The first topic we'll be seeing today is cryptography. This is the base for cryptocurrency and this is a technique for transmitting messages from one person to another person securely. There is an algorithm involved in this process both at the sender and the receiver side and keys are important for encrypting and decrypting the messages at every end. These encryption keys help in unauthorized access to the third parties. There are different cryptography methods and I'm not going to discuss all of them here. The one that is related to cryptocurrency is hashing technique and within hashing there are multiple methods as well. Cryptocurrency There are more than 16,000 cryptocurrencies in the market. So what are they? Cryptocurrencies are the digital or virtual currencies unlike regular currencies. The regular currencies are controlled by the central authorities like RBI and they are legal across the country. But cryptocurrencies are not governed by any authorities especially the central government. Blockchain is the underlying technology for the cryptocurrencies and they are used to send money cheaper and faster even across the borders. Government is hesitating to approve them as legal coins because of its decentralized nature that it could be used for illegal activities like money laundering and terrorism. If you want to buy these coins, I have made a video on how to buy coins legally. Link is available at the top right corner of this video. Just have a look. Fiat Currency the regular currencies issued by the government of each country are referred as fiat currencies in the crypto world. They are legally approved paper currency like US dollar, euro, INA, etc. Fiat currencies are used to purchase cryptocurrencies in the crypto exchanges. The next topic we'll be seeing is blockchain. Blockchain is not too complex to understand. Simply put, it is just a database distributed across the network of computers to store the data securely. It is also called as distributed ledger technology. General database structures the data into tables and here the data are stored in blocks with chunk of data. These blocks have certain size limit and once filled with fresh data, they are then added to the already filled blocks like a chain link in a chronological order, thus deriving the name as blockchain. It is commonly used for storing ledger transaction data and all of the transactions are stored permanently and it is irreversible, meaning it cannot be altered, deleted or destroyed. For simple understanding, blockchain can be referred to a whole lot of banking transaction and a single block can be compared to an ordinary bank ATM printouts. To understand more on the blockchain technology, I have made a separate elaborative video and the link is at the top right. The next, mining. Crypto coins can either be bought through exchanges or can also be mined. Mining is a process where a complex mathematical puzzle is solved using resource intensive work. Counterfeiting is always an issue with the paper currency. So to solve such problems in digital currencies, they are actually validated through a process called proof of work to confirm it as legit transaction. The miners are actually awarded with coins once they successfully mine a coin. This mining process requires a lot of resources like high GPUs, uninterrupted electricity and internet connection. I have heard a lot of people setting up mining farms with windmill as electricity source. And there are a lot of debates that mining activity is not environment friendly as it uses a lot of electricity. Proof of work is mandatory to make sure that the data stored in the network is not vulnerable to either attack or theft. Since the data is decentralized and needs high level of security, it needs to be in consensus with the other computer nodes on the network and also to prevent bad people to enter the network. Hashing techniques are used for this proof of work mechanism and it is correlated to the mining process. Miners will generate a hash number at the end of this process and it needs to be closely matched with the target set by the blockchain network. Hash Hash is a process of getting actual encrypted data from the proof of work. It is basically a mathematical function that converts an input value of arbitrary length 
to a fixed encrypted value. This process adds more security to the transaction as to not detect the actual message or who are the senders and the recipients. Also, it is a one-way process and from the resultant hash value, nobody can find the input value. Crypto Wallets Once you have purchased a coin or mined it, you need to have some place for storing them. So, wallets help them to store your cryptos securely. Basically, there are two types. A hot wallet, which is a mobile or software wallet that are connected to the internet and can be accessed at any time with the help of password, which are actually keys. Second one is a cold wallet, which is a secure hardware device that usually stores coins securely and not connected to the internet. DeFi The decentralized finance is in the early stage now and it is basically bringing all of the financial products onto the blockchain technology. If implemented in large scale, there won't be any need for banking or brokerage companies and would directly deal with the buyer or seller and lender or borrower with the use of technology. How cool, isn't it? And now you know why the cryptocurrencies are not being accepted legally by the government. Yes, most of the financial institutions have to close the shop permanently once DeFi is implemented fully. Smart Contracts 10 years before the invention of the Bitcoin, a computer scientist invented a virtual currency called BitGold and he coined this word smart contract. It is nothing but the terms and conditions between the buyer and seller or the lender and borrower that we usually have it in the documents in current scenario. All these will be auto-generated based on the backend code. NFTs are nothing but non-fungible assets which are primarily unique digital assets like artworks, domain names, avatars, etc. NFTs can be bought in the marketplace and ownership can be authenticated using blockchain. Market Capitalization The total market value of the cryptocurrency is calculated by multiplying the current price of the particular coin with the total circulating supply in the market. They usually vary every day because of the volatility of the market as well as the new supply of coins being mined and added to the market. ICO If you are a share market trader, then you would have already heard of IPO, Initial Public Offerings. Similar to that, in crypto, we have ICO, which is called Initial Coin Offerings. ICO brings in a new cryptocurrency to the market, and if you have the right blockchain technology, and if you can bring out an innovative concept into the real world, then you are also a right person to introduce a crypto coin. Main difference between IPO and ICO is that you can raise funds needed to develop your innovation, without staking in your ownership to anyone. Oh, these topics are just a droplet and when you take a deep dive into the crypto concepts, you will find it more interesting as well. Thanks for your patience in watching this video and don't forget to subscribe and comment on your questions. Please share with your friends and hit on the like button. See you on my next video and until then, good luck on crypto.